Every day around the world, approximately 2.4 billion cups of coffee are consumed. To meet this high demand, millions of people harvest tons of coffee beans. But how are 175,000 jars of coffee produced every day? We visited the Nescafe factory to uncover how one of the world's most popular beverages is made. Coffee is the second most consumed beverage in the world after water. It is believed to have been discovered by a shepherd who noticed that his goats became more active after eating certain beans. Coffee has been cultivated for over a thousand years and is now produced in over 60 countries worldwide. The history of Nescafe dates back to the early 20th century, when Swiss chemist Max Morgenthaler began working on a way to produce soluble coffee. In 1930, Nestle acquired the patent rights from Morgenthaler and started producing and marketing soluble coffee under the Nescafe brand. The company invested heavily in advertising and promotion, and soon Nescafe became a leading brand in the coffee market. During World War II, Nescafe became a staple for American troops and the Allied forces, as it was easy to transport and prepare on the battlefield. After the war, Nescafe became a popular product worldwide, and Nestle continued to innovate in the production and packaging of soluble coffee. The flavor of coffee depends on the region where it's grown and the roasting and blending techniques used by producers. Brazil is the world's largest coffee producer, accounting for about 35% of the world's coffee production. It begins with the growth of coffee flowers. Nine months later, the blossoms turn into grape-sized berries. Coffee is harvested from the plants once the berries are ripe, identifiable by their deep red color. It takes about six to nine months from coffee flowering to the point of harvest. Within six months, the blossoms grow and mature into red berries containing the coffee beans. Harvesters pick the red berries, leaving the green ones to mature further, returning to collect them as they ripen. Harvesters aim to have no more than two green berries for every 100 leaves they collect. The berries are emptied into sacks, each basket containing around 2 kilograms of coffee beans, enough to make about 200 cups. Harvesting by hand is exhausting work, so some coffee plantations have turned to mechanical harvesters. These 5-meter-tall harvesters do the work of a 100 people. As they move along a row of trees, the machine vibrates rods inside it, causing the berries to fall from the branches. The fresher the berry, the better its taste. Berries picked in the morning are stored in a wet mill, ready for afternoon processing. In the wet mill, water channels wash the berries and drop them onto a screw auger, which feeds them into a pulpier to remove the outer skin and fruit. A rotating drum presses the berries against the pulpier's wall, squeezing out the bean. From the pulpier, the beans travel through water to two massive rotating cylinders. There, they are sieved to separate them from the green, tough berries that pass through the pulpier. The beans are then soaked in water to extract a thick, sugary substance. Afterward, workers spread them out in the traditional way on a cement patio to dry. For four days, they rake the beans to ensure even drying under the sun. Once dried, the beans go through a hulling process. Massive stones inside a polisher remove the husk from the beans. The dried beans are now husk-free and are sorted on an oscillating table by weight into three categories. The beans from each category are poured into bags, each weighing exactly 69 kilograms, ready to be sent to coffee processing plants. The bags are sewn shut and stacked for shipment. But how are these coffee beans transformed into a cup of quality coffee? Every year, 35 million tons of freshly harvested coffee fruits arrive at plants like this one, one of the world's largest soluble coffee plants. This is Nestle's factory, where 890 people work to produce instant coffee. Every day, 175,000 jars of coffee are produced here. It all starts with a delivery of coffee beans. 170 tons of beans arrive from South America to this instant coffee factory every day with up to 560 tons stored in this massive silo. Each day, 1,200 sacks of raw material are brought into this plant. The process begins with sampling, where each bag is punctured to obtain a coffee sample. Nescafe factory uses two types of coffee, 
the Arabica variety and the Robusta variety. Arabica produces a fine and aromatic coffee, while Robusta is known for its full body and strong flavor. Once a batch is approved, it enters the production line. The coffee passes through a mesh that filters out larger debris that the bag might contain through a system of pipes. The beans arrive at the cleaning section, where they go through a machine with various screens that remove impurities and prepare them for the next step. After being cleaned, the beans are sent to a designated silo based on their variety and type, specifically for the production of soluble coffee. They then move on to the roasting phase. The beans are introduced into a roaster. Roasting is crucial to develop the aroma, color, and flavor. The coffee beans are roasted at 210 degrees Celsius. By heating the beans to 210 degrees for 12 minutes, the starches inside them turn into sugars, releasing the aromatic compounds that give coffee its flavor. Roasting also begins to break down caffeine. The longer the roast, the more caffeine is lost. The beans are constantly agitated to ensure even roasting without burning. The roasted beans are ground into a coarse powder in an industrial grinder. The roasted and ground coffee beans are transported to this section of the plant. Inside these tanks, which function like large coffee makers, the coffee is mixed with hot water. This process is called extraction. When hot water contacts the coffee, it extracts the flavors, aromas, and properties. The coffee is heated until it condenses into an extract which is spread on a conveyor belt to the next station, the freezing room. Every hour, 30,000 liters of coffee travel through heated pipes inside the tower, maintained at 70 degrees Celsius. The water evaporates and is extracted by the siphon. For water removal, the freeze-drying method can be used. The coffee infusion is frozen at around minus 50 degrees Celsius, causing a thin surface layer to form that can then be broken into pieces and subjected to a vacuum. This process preserves the coffee's flavor. Workers must wear thermal clothing to protect themselves from the Arctic temperatures of minus 50 degrees Celsius. As the liquid coffee moves along the conveyor belt, it receives a blast of cold air. It only takes two minutes to solidify, becoming a solid sheet of frozen coffee about 8 millimeters thick. Next, it goes into a crusher that breaks it down into frozen granules ranging from 2 to 3 millimeters in size. The granules come out of the freezer on shallow trays, each containing 15 kilograms, enough for 75 jars. They are directed into a lock and introduced into a massive vacuum chamber where all the air has been removed. Then it enters the drying chamber. The dryer heats up, melting the ice within the granules, but in a vacuum, the ice immediately turns into gas without becoming liquid. This process is called sublimation. Once the water is removed, the coffee powder reaches the filling machine. Hundreds of glass jars are placed on a conveyor belt. The jars move along the conveyor belt and are filled in less than a second. This machine fills 280 jars per minute. It will take over 11 hours to fill today's batch of 175,000 jars. The coffee is vacuum sealed for quality preservation over 24 months. If you want to learn how sugar is made from sugarcane, you can find the link in the description. Like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might be interested. Also, subscribe to this channel and enable notifications to keep learning.